I uh, myself don't doubt that possibly when there's some time and distance from this immediate period that uh, the last decade and possibly the last two decades in American theater that any objective assessment of it will probably conclude that the most significant development in American theater has been the rise of the black theater movement itself. For size of population and, and social and economic position within this culture, I think that the black theater movement was an astounding uh, creative development and that it will prove as significant to American theater as the quote, angry young men phase of uh, British uh, theater. I think it was no accident that uh, this very vital movement happened. It did not come out of the inner consciousness or the, the pondering of the artists themselves. It was a movement which, which coincided with an upheaval in American society where black people were trying to define themselves and to fight for what they considered to be their rightful place in American society. It was through the, this tumult that those artists were stimulated to find their own outlets and forums to artistically, imaginatively deal with the issues of the day, the issues that had endured historically, and so forth, that suddenly a very, very fresh, vital, viral, viral movement developed and since many of the outlets of this society were closed off, the theater became almost a favorite place for the energies of this impulse to express itself. In saying that, it's, uh, I think, quite obvious that this was essentially an urban experience. This was an art which the theater, which in most of its enduring works dealt with, was by city dwellers, dealt with themes of city life, and parallel the energy, the problems, and everything else that was happening to black people in the larger society as a whole. Just a listing of the plays starting from Raisin in the Sun, Dutchman, Ceremonies in Dark Old Men, the River Niger, Sty of the Blind Pig, The Bulk of Bullen's Work, The First Breeze of Summer, The Offering, Colored Girls, Eden, The Mighty Gents. All of these works, in some way, most of them, deal specifically with an urban locale. In some instances, very, uh, uh, very literalized. New York City, Philadelphia, Chicago. And I think that uh, in relation to, to the, the theme of the conference that the black theater movement probably typifies more than any other uh, wing of the theater this, uh, this, this link between the art and the urban society uh, itself. And I think that that's, that's, that's only natural because the fate and resolution of black people's existence in this country is dictated and determined by black people's trials and tribulations and triumphs in the major urban centers, centers of this country. And the black participation in the theater is merely reflective of this. I have come to the conclusion that once the black theater movement itself 
made a thrust for autonomy, which essentially meant black artists running the institutions and, 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 and making decisions about what, what they did. That once that was done, it became very convenient to a certain extent for the larger society and its, 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 uh, uh, its critics, and sometimes it, it, our, our brother artists, brother and sister artists, to think, well, that, 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 was a, that was a separate, that was something that was separate from the larger picture. And consequently, even if the River Niger wins the Tony Award as the best play of the, the year, and I'm not uh, uh, saying anything about believing in awards, but since it, is, it, it does exist as a value judgment, you will very seldom see a, 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 a survey or a conclusion which would deal with Mammoth and Joe Walker uh, together. It is almost as if the subculture you want to put it that way. The art itself is deemed separate, and in some instances, I think, thought to be not, of, uh, uh, not, not up to the par of the majority art. When any realistic, objective assessment of these writers writing in the same, the same period, their comparisons that, that are made in terms of similarities and also differences. The one thing is that they, there's no such thing when, when black people in, in America talk, talk about their own autonomy. There's no way that what we, at least what I mean, is that we are able to extricate ourselves from being part of the larger society. And I don't think that there is any way that the larger society, the majority society, can extricate itself from us. The, there are, I have said to a few white, my fellow white playwrights who I've come in contact with at one point, that uh, it was possible, in ter terms of the connection, it is possible that we, we saved the day for them to become the neo-realists. <laughs> it was the period in which the black writers resuscitated, if you want to put it that way, the, the conventional mode of, of, of realism at a point where it seemed that white playwriting had reached a, a dead end to a certain extent as a group. And, uh, and, and we went on and did, did what we had to do. And finally, uh, five or six or 10 years later, there comes the emergence of a group of, quote, white neo-realists who were not shamed to write uh, some accessible works. So at, at least half jokingly, sometime I said, well, if, maybe if uh, during that period of time we held, we held a stage for you to allow you to, to reemerge out of academia or out of imitation of uh, European modernism to uh, find your own voice. Now I say that uh, maybe an exaggeration, but I think that possibly if there was a real study of all of the writers writing at the same period of time that you would find that consciously or unconsciously the uh, uh, we do touch the river niger and all of the public audience that saw the river niger spoke to the public that saw it including the white public the only the only the only thing in terms of subject matter and theme like any other great art sean o'casey was universal because he he spoke about the particulars of his Irish experience, the place, the particularities of what he was going through. It is through the, the particular that we generalize, that it becomes universal. That does not mean that black writers should cease to write about the particulars of their experience. If they are good enough writers, if they have given us enough dry, or dab of truth, it will communicate itself to all other peoples, it, it's, universal, it, its universality will emerge out of its particularity. 